Steps towards removing the forever chemicals known as PFAS are underway, but not happening as quickly as some would like. Prolonged exposure from PFAS can cause health problems like birth defects, high blood pressure, changes to liver enzymes, and even cancer. We're digging deeper into what people truly know about the issue at hand and the road ahead for those facing this contamination. John Morshauser is all too used to this process. Load up, grab another case. Load up, grab another case. Load up, grab another case. He's been doing this for about a year now because his water is unsafe to drink due to the high levels of PFAS. It's not the worst thing in the world, but it, it is kind of annoying to have to fill up your fridge all the time with the bottled water. Morshauser lives in one of hundreds of homes whose water is contaminated due to firefighting foam containing PFAS. That foam was used at the airport and those chemicals have now seeped into the groundwater. I'm a school teacher and we talk about it with the kids about um, is it a human right to have access to safe drinking water? And kids are like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So they've heard about lead in the water. They've heard about pesticides sometimes that get into the water, but when they, when they talk about uh, PFAS, they, they're just like, huh, what do you mean? I say like, oh, you know, French Island, and they're like, oh yeah, poison water. Right now, over 90 sites are under investigation for PFAS, but unless the problem is directly impacting you, you might not exactly understand what PFAS are or where it comes from. We put out a survey on our website and collected responses over five days. Our first question was, do you know what PFAS are? 57.6% said yes, 42.4% said no. Our second question was, if someone on the street were to ask you to define PFAS, would you be able to do it? 54.2% said yes, 45.8% said no. The other part of our research brought us from here on French Island to the Wisconsin State Capitol where we spoke with different students and young adults to see what they knew about per and polyfluoroalkyl substances. I'm not going to lie, I have no idea what that word stands for. I believe it is an organic fluorine molecule. Uh, isn't it in like non-stick pans? Um, from what I've heard, it's a chemical that stays in the water for a really long time. Uh, I know it's referred to PFAS, but I'm not sure what it is. Do you think the general population knows what PFAS are? I really don't think so. PFAS is hard for people to always comprehend. It is a class of chemicals. Thousands of different types of chemicals fall under that PFAS category, and they're super useful. So you can find PFAS just about everywhere. Clean water advocates like Amy Barrio are trying to shift the narrative from using a name like PFAS to forever chemicals to elevate the gravity of the situation. It gets at what really concerns us about those chemicals. It's not just that they are harmful, it's that they are harmful and they stay. They can stay in people's bodies, they can stay in fish, in soil, in sediment, in water, um, and they have really concerning properties. Um, they don't break down naturally in the environment. The hope is that the more people understand the problem, the more they'll take action. But that can be difficult, especially when research is still ongoing into these emerging chemicals. Every year there's new studies, the health impacts are, are, are constantly going, there's new evaluations, there's new PFAS compounds themselves come to the forefront. Like uh, Originally it was just two compounds, PFOA, PFOS, and then Gen X came along, so there's always a new compound of concern so just the constant the speed at which things are moving has been has been difficult all of this says places like the town of Campbell await a piece of federal funding for relief Wisconsin is set to receive nearly 143 million dollars for water remediation including funds for PFAS however we have yet to know how that funding will be used bottle water thing Morshauser um, considers the solutions in place right now a band-aid response to the problem one of my neighbors, they're down a little bit, they're more by the airport, but they were just frustrated by getting the big water, water tanks and the water bottles and bringing them in and it was just hard for them. They said, forget it, we're, we're done. Um, we're just gonna go back to our, our well water. So all people like John can do is just wait and hope for a more permanent solution soon. There's, there's still PFAS in the groundwater here. 
So there's a lot of information there, Mike. What are the, the next steps Wisconsin can take? Yeah, so this week, Governor Evers made $600,000 available from the EPA for sampling in different communities. And as we just saw, Wausau testing their wells, uh, discovering PFAS there. So that is an opportunity that others can pursue around the state, uh, not just here in La Crosse or French Island, but uh, many of the other communities here in western Wisconsin. And what are the biggest hurdles the state is facing when it comes to cleanup? Yeah, so one of the biggest things right now and the biggest holdup that we're seeing is setting some of those standards for water quality um, that will regulate some of these forever chemicals. That's where the biggest holdup we see. The Wisconsin DNR is planning to release its standards later this month, but that still has to be approved by the Republican controlled legislature and some of the uh, lobbying groups like uh, Wisconsin Manufacturers and Commerce has told the legislature they want the federal standards. They want to go by federal standards versus state standards, which some of those federal standards could take years and years to produce by the EPA. So that's where things stand right now. So an important issue and we appreciate you bringing light to that.